is zero because I've just have part basically I have like partial partial x1. So my x1 is r. So this just becomes a sum over j. Um, j equals 1 to 2 of partial yj and um, partial x1. Partial partial yj. I'm just I'm going to write this down here to try to make the connection, but let me kind of unpack that. Um, what that really is, of course, is partial x, partial r, partial partial x, plus partial y, partial r, partial partial y. Because again, I'm just I'm, x1 is my first coordinate, which is r on the domain, right? And I mean, of course, we can calculate this here, right? What is partial x, partial r? It's cosine theta partial partial x, right? Plus sine theta partial partial y. And what's the push forward? What's the push forward of the uh, theta derivation? I mean, you can kind of guess. It's partial x, partial theta, partial partial x plus partial y, partial theta, partial partial y. Or to be careful, I would put in the point dependence of all this stuff. Right. Or, or you can think about it as being a calculation for vector fields, if you'd rather. And what is that? Well, that's minus r sine theta, partial partial x, um, plus r cosine theta, partial partial y. Now, I guess to be fair, I should really express the final result in terms of what? x and y, right? How do you write this in terms of x and y? Well, that's x over the square root of x squared plus y squared, partial partial x, and then plus y over the square root of x squared plus y squared, partial partial y. And this would be what? Minus y partial partial x plus x partial partial y. This is the so-called push forward. We take a vector field in the domain, and we get a vector field in the in the in the range. Well, I should I, I'm being a little bit cavalier here again. We might worry that f is not injective, so you might <coughs> excuse me. You might come back to the point you started and attach more than one vector, which would be a problem. But anyway, we can definitely do the push forward at at one point, and we can push a vector from from m over to n. You, you guys see it? And my point to you is actually you've already been doing that back in Calc 3 when we do coordinate change. Right? So one application of the push forward is just to think about coordinate change on a given space. And change from der derivatives with respect to one coordinate system to derivatives with respect to another coordinate system. But it's more than this, right? Because you don't have to map from a space to itself, right? You, can, you could look at a mapping like I was starting to look at down here before. Um, let me try to go back to that now. First, let me foolishly try to go back to it. <laughs> what if I, if I look at the mapping from here to here? Oh, man. Can you guys think of a mapping that I can take from here to here? Call it F. f of theta is equal to, oh, maybe I should look at the other way. That's more interesting. Let me look at the other way. Maybe that's even more interesting. How about f of um, theta comma, oh, sorry, phi comma theta equals to, what's that? Theta, OK. So then if you look at the push forward, and I'll use the other notation. If we look at the push forward of partial partial phi, what do we get? The push forward of partial partial theta, what do we get? It's 
kind of bad in the sense that we're using theta in two different ways, right? Maybe I should use like alpha as the angle up here. Say theta equals to alpha, just to give it a different name. So here you'd have, <coughs> well, yeah, exactly. And this one we'd have, let me make this more exciting. Theta cubed, ooh. Then we get three theta squared, um, but it would be alpha. Alpha squared, partial, partial alpha when you work through it. Now, I'm, I'm being a little bit cavalier. I'm stating the mapping in terms of its coordinate representative. That's what's bugging me is I'm not, I haven't stated that very clearly. Like, I mean, this is the value of f, how can I say this? Well, I mean, what, what, what we have here is the coordinate, this is the, the mapping. No, I, I just can't find the words today for it. I'm, I'm gonna just stop trying to say what I'm trying to say because it's not happening. All right, so <coughs> once you have a tangent space, what's the next move? Dual the dual space, right. So if the, if the tangent, space, tangent space to m is the span of partial partial x1 at p, da -da -da, partial partial xn at p, or I guess M, M dimensional. Did I use N or M? I can't remember. I guess M for M. Then the dual space, in the usual sense of linear algebra, is in fact the span of dx1, da da da, dx m. Now, technically, I should say at the point P, but. Um, and I'll write it this once, but I, I don't always write these at P's because they get really, really old, really, really fast. The differentials are in fact the dual, the dual basis. So I'm, I'm suggesting to you, right, that Let's see here. What, what, what's the condition we need? Dx, dxp i acting on partial partial xj at the point p. What's that supposed to work out to? Well, we know what it's supposed to work out to. It's supposed to work out to the Kronecker delta ij. Right. Let me show you why that. I mean, this is this is a this is a claim. I mean, there's a more basic thing I could write. What's the definition? What's the definition of the dual space? It's the set of linear functionals on the tangent space, right? It's a set of linear transformations from tangent vectors to real numbers. My claim is that you can write that as a span of the differentials. To see that the differentials, in fact, are a dual basis, look at this. What, what's, this what's the definition of this, remember? I guess we haven't really defined that, have we? But Or have we? Did you just use the definition of the push yeah, let's see here. Right, I think that's the thing is we can either look at this as a push forward, right? Or we can look at it as what? Well, I think that may be it at the moment. Maybe that's all I can do. So yeah, push forward, let's say. Um, so this x sub i is mapping from m to the reals, right? I mean, it could be some subset of m, I suppose, but... So what should I... The question is, if it's the push forward, what's the... I mean, yeah, we know that that's a typical coordinate, a typical tangent vector to m. What's a typical tangent vector to r? Maybe you could use partial partial t, right? For the, for the r the tangent space to R. 
um, the tangent sp space at the point x of p. Um, x sub i of p, right, of r, would be the span um, partial partial t. Let me call this thing uh, t upper i. You could call it t naught or something like that. I mean, whatever. It's a single. It's one dimensional, right? So to make sense of this, what do I have to do? Feed this a what? Feed this a g, right? And how is that defined then? Partial partial x j, right? Of what? Was it, am I, wait a minute. I'm sorry, I, I've forgotten my definition. Oh, the g goes the other way, right? So it's g. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so, I mean, what I'm doing isn't, it's not, not that I'm, what I'm doing is terribly wrong, it's just not the best way for our current discussion. So I was trying to calculate what's dp x upper i of uh, um, partial partial xj at the point p, right? So if we if we trust follow our follow the, this this you know how to calculate. So what what is this? What's the um, the x? What are the components? What's the x upper i here? It's 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 just one if i is equal to j. It's zero otherwise. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm using i in a different way here. The point is that the the summation over the i in that red formula over there goes away. So I'm just left with what? I'm left with and the sum over j. Well, that's kind of boring too because the 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 range here is one dimensional. So the sum over j is just one thing. So what do I have? I really just have what partial. Uh, sorry, this is clear as mud at the moment. Just awful. We have five extra minutes, you forgot. Yeah, we started a full five minutes late today, so I'm sorry, but I must have my pound of flesh. It's not like I have any way of like videotaping extra hours of lecture when the when the mood strikes me. <laughs> Sorry, I had to get that I, I had to get the the Hodge dual stuff out of my system. So the the order of things in Rentland's backwards, by the way. Well, not backwards. I mean, maybe it's better. I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, he he does pullbacks first. He does push forward second. I'm doing push forwards first. And then I'll do I'll do pullbacks next class. And so next class we're mostly talking about differential forms, which are things built from wedge products of differentials. There we'll learn the exterior derivative and all of the awesome goodies that go with that. Um, here, what I was trying to get to show you was we're in cotangent. Uh, the the dual space to the tangent space here is called the cotangent space. And here is a very careful discussion of what I was just trying, to, what I was just mangling. So dp xk of partial partial xj would be partial partial xj of g, uh, I should have stuck my guns to start with, g of x of k. All right. But this is exactly partial xk partial xj dg dt by the chain rule because I'm differentiating a function of, you know, uh, more than one variable, I suppose. Um, well, maybe 
Anyway, so that's a chain rule. And then, of course, this was Kronecker delta jk, and this is just ddt of, of g, right? And then here's the thing, is when we're working with the reals, we, it's a convention we have to identify the, the reals with its own tangent space. So basically, the convention is to set this partial partial, this ddt equal to 1, essentially. So with, res with, in, in regard, with respect to that convention, we just have Kronecker delta jk of g. And so there you have it, dp xk of partial partial xj is, in fact, just Kronecker delta ik. But you see there, there's two different viewpoints here that are competing. The one is that xk is a smooth function, right? And so I can think of it as a push forward. But the other thing is it's just the dual basis. You could think of this as just being the dual basis to the, to the coordinate derivations. And as you can see, as long as we have this convention that ddt is 1, these, these, these two different competing meanings for the differential are sympatico. Um, there's a, I actually have a linear algebra book which uses dxi as in, in the place of e I, upper i like we use it. So, all right. Anyway, so if you collect your thoughts and do this instead of, do the same argument instead of for a coordinate derivation just for an arbitrary vector field, you have this re relation. The differential, so here f is a function, a real valued function. The differential of a real valued function acting on a vector field x is just the vector field acting on, on f. And that also, by the way, explains, as you read on in the notes a little bit better, why we're using derivations for the tangent space. There's a simple connection with the directional derivative, something maybe I'll show you next time. Anyway, that's about all I can squeeze into one day, so thanks. <laughs>